So you you have a candy skull costume. That is neat. Yes. Look, well, I figured we push over into midnight. So by the time we're done, it'll be Dia de los Muertos. So this is what I spent the last hour and a half doing while I was watching the stream. I have a little little setup over here with uh, leftover candy and lots of makeup. Oh, you actually got trick or treaters? Yeah. I didn't. I, didn't get, I, I was working till eight, so I didn't really see any of them. But Dan, and he goes all out. Like he had a fog machine and a projector that made ghosts on the door, and the cats have never seen children before, so it was very exciting for them. I didn't. I didn't get any 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 trick or treaters. I'm so disappointed. That's bum. I wanted because I my thinking was I didn't want to scare the kids. I wanted to scare their parents. Because if you see me answer the door like this, the yeah. kids are either going to think it's cute or it's dumb. The parents are going to do that thing. You, you ever seen parents with their kids? They'll do this thing. They'll put their hand on their head mm -hmm. and they'll pull the kid in close like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I little, want maybe a little chestery. I, I wanted. I wanted. I, I was. I was aiming for the terrifying the parents. That was. That was my goal. <laughs> but no one of them showed. I got to the point. Where I was like, you know what? The next trick or treater. The, the, the if any trick or treaters show up, I'm just gonna be like, dump the entire bowl of candy in their bag and like, guess what, kid? You won. Yeah. Well, I always buy way too much candy. So yeah. Like last year, I bought way too much candy, and I was just like, everybody gets four pieces of candy, and I don't buy shit. Like. I'm talking like kids are getting two peanut butter cups and a fun size Snickers. You did fun size? Yeah. Fun size is off. Tara never do fun size. Well, I'm giving them like three of them though. Yeah, but you could give them like a whole one. Because fun size is a lie. It is. It is not fun. <laughs> fun size is never fun. No one ever got a fun size anything and went, boy, I'm having a ball now. I used to get fun size Snickers in my lunch when I was a kid for school. Ugh. And I used to make other kids do stupid human tricks for them. That that just went to show there was a dirt that there was a deficiency of candy in your school. If they went, I'll do I was an asshole. I'll do tricks for a fun size. That 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 that's sad. That's just sad. But yeah, the the kitten said, that, "Oh, hi, Dottie. I'm being watched." <laughs> hi. I heard crinkling paper. Yeah, the next couple weeks are going to be very exciting around here because I unwrapped a Snickers bar before and Dottie came running because she wanted the wrapper. But yeah, they were very excited, like watching. They're like, why are all these little humans coming over? Are they here to play with us? So. Grady would have just hid. No, they had the best time. What Peggy do you want? especially. They hear the doorbell and they come running. They just think everybody's a new friend. I was just paying attention to you. What? Knock it off. Swipe it at my hand. What's wrong well, with you're you? Not, well, you're not paying attention to me now. Uh, freaking Grady, I swear. All right. Well, we have two things for you tonight. Because we're going to start, of course, with, with the usual, with what, what we, we are used to doing. We have the horrible news. And then we have a little special we do here. I'm sure you will like it. Do stay tuned. Those of you who bail immediately after the after this bit goes off, don't do that. This sorry. Time. Yeah. Let's get the intro up. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" and Mother of fucking, it's not, it wasn't even Halloween yet, and we already have Halloween shit. How is that possible? I don't know. That doesn't seem like it should be, and yet it is. Let's see. Oh, shit, I'm fucking everything up here. There we go. That's not fucked up. Um. So we're going to start with haunted houses. I hate them. Why do you hate them? Because I'm a big wuss. <laughs> big wuss. Don't like them. 
freaks me out. And I my fear reflex is punching. Well, all right. There there is there is of course the 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 normal haunted house, which is put on at you know you go to like a a county fair or something. And there is a different kind of haunted house. The Christian haunted house. See, I got kicked out of the one at the Methodist church, my sister and I, because she kicked somebody and I punched somebody. We were asked to not return, but they didn't do the kind you're, ta- you're about to talk about. They yeah. just did a haunted house. Yeah, this is the one where it, the, the, the Christian haunted house, for those of you who are unaware, is a little bit different than a haunted house. Yeah. It's pretty much, I, I guess these days, it's pretty much what scares conservative white people. Yeah. Is 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 how the Christian you know, like works. there's a way you could do it and make it work. Like if you did Dante's Nine Circles of Hell, this show would be terrifying. I mean, you have to find people willing to swim in a river of shit, but it would be terrifying. Well, but that's not what we do. This year there was one that went even too far for the standard Christian haunted house. It comes from Chicago. Chicago school cancels Christian haunted house that disca- that depicted Pulse nightclub massacre. No. Halloween. No. Yes. Hall- no. Halloween is one of those interesting holidays that, despite not celebrating ter- anything terribly offensive in itself, ne- nevertheless, inevitably drives people to do offensive things. Most of that time, that offensive offensiveness is limited to tone-deaf outfit choices by clueless individuals who haven't got the memo about cultural appropriation. But Which, s- can't believe that's still a thing, but you know. But somehow this year, a person who called himself, quote, a licensed minister used his entertainment company to organize a Christian haunted house event at a Chicago elementary school. Not, we're not even talking high school here, elementary school. That depicted, among other things, the Pulse nightclub massacre. According to the Windy City Times, Tyrone Tapler Productions put a call out via Facebook uh, for club pulse dancers, victims, cage people, screamers, extras needed trying to escape a cage. Tickets for the event uh, scheduled to run on Saturday and Sunday nights were selling for $10 to $20. Um... Visitors to the room, as they put it, would walk through 10 rooms, description states, in which they were to, quote, encounter individuals who would make choices. The choice is life or death, sin or salvation, heaven or hell. The Pulse Massacre wasn't the only off-color scene to be shown in the house. It also repeatedly set to depict a botched abortion and the Charleston Massacre, in which nine black Christians were gunned down by 21-year-old white Dylan Roof. Well, the Facebook. What exactly was the wrong choice in that scenario? Being black? <laughs> While the Facebook page for Tyrone Tapler Productions has disappeared, his website says, quote, Tyrone Tapler believes in reaching people in an unconventional way. Mm-hmm. No. You're reaching people, all right. You're reaching people, they're reaching for blunt instruments. Here's the thing. Nobody's going to find Jesus because you recreated the Pulse nightclub shooting. That's not going to bring anybody to Jesus. That's going to bring somebody to uh, trauma. Yes. To a Trump rally if they're a huge asshole like you. Yeah. It's not going to bring anybody to Jesus. That's not converting people. And by the way... By the way, you're advocating vindictiveness, which is a sin. You are delighting in the destruction of sinners, which is a sin. By the way, you fucking hypocrite. I mean, fuck's sake. Can't you just bob for apples like normal motherfuckers? Really? Can't you just have a dude with a chainsaw run out from behind a corner? And an elementary school. What the fuck are the kids going to know about any of this shit? You know what sort of current events I followed when I was seven, eight, nine years old? Saturday morning goddamn cartoons. Oh, no. I grew up. 
I got sent out in 1984 to trick or treat dressed as Geraldine Ferraro. You probably didn't even know who the fuck Geraldine Ferraro. Oh was. no, I did, and I knew why she was important. Like, I, my my family was political from the start. I I, could, I was sent out as a little Geraldine Ferraro. Well, I personally. I could name each and every Transformer. That was my special skill at that age. I knew them all. That was my that was my big one. I knew like, all of them. Like maybe you raise your kids to be involved in the news and current events. That's great. This is again not the way to do it. No. So the kids are just going to know all this horrible shit is happening, and they're not even going to connect it to the thing you were trying to connect it to. No. They're just going to go, this is fucked up. All right. I, I was raised Catholic. And I have my problems with the Catholic Church. But I firmly believe that the way to bring people to faith is not to fucking terrify them into it. That doesn't stick. Here, I'll ask my, my in-house psychologist. Which is more effective? Negative conditioning or positive conditioning? What? Oh, hi, Grady. <laughs> hi. I want to be on the internet. What? Yell at you. What do you want? I just wanted to yell at you. You look stupid in that outfit. He was scared of this thing earlier. I'm going to sit up here. He was he was hissing when he first saw me in this. He went... <laughs> Fuck the you. girl... I thought the cats, like... I thought the cats would be freaked out because last year when I did the Cheshire Cat makeup, Miracle wanted nothing to do with me. Like, poor Miracle was like, no, you're, you're the demon cat from hell. These two were like, what? What? Yeah, they don't give a shit. Am I supposed to be impressed? There are tiny humans out there. Like, they're just... Well, so it's... Freaky. <laughs> yes. He does that quite often. And occasionally when I'm sitting back, he will shift over and put his ass right on my head. <laughs> it's warm. So I have his butthole on my head. It's warm. Let's move on to Texas. We've got an interesting one from Texas. Um, you know, I've, I've often seen it remarked that a lot of people trying to shame uh, teenage girls for taking selfies is trying to damage their self-esteem and they're taking pride in themselves. And that's fair. However, I am going to shame this girl. Not so much the fact she was taking a selfie, but the where and the how. Topless selfie linked to car crash. Oh. A tipsy Texas collegian was taking a topless Snapchat photo for her boyfriend last night, moments before she crashed her car into a parked police cruiser. Ma Miranda K. Raider, 19, so already we drunk underage, not good, drove her SUV into the rear of a squad car whose driver had exited the vehicle to investigate a disturbance call. Raider was not interest was not injured. Um, when a patrolman approached Raider's Acura, he noticed the student had a unclassed brazier and was quote attempting to put a black blouse on. Now, officer asked why she was not dressed while driving. Raider replied she had been taking a Snapchat photo to send to her boyfriend while she was at the red light. <sighs> Raider reportedly agreed to perform a series of field sobriety tests. She was subsequently arrested for driving while intoxicated with an open container of alcohol. Your boyfriend can jerk off when you get where you're going. Wow. Your boyfriend can jerk off to the memory of your tits. I guarantee you if you've seen them, he knows what they look like. Your boyfriend could likely this. jerk off to like a, 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 a spherical object that vaguely resembles your tits. You know those lighting fixtures that look like boobs? He could probably jerk off to that. Yeah, guys, we can jerk off to kind of anything. We're, we're not complicated. We're... Like, your tit shot can wait until you're not operating a vehicle. I just... <laughs> and just drinking. At a red light, you're going, hey, you know what would be great right now? I took a picture of my boobs. 
If I disrobed, surely there's enough time in a red light. And you, man, of all the cars to hit. Yeah. That's just, someone doesn't like you. When you're in that situation of all the cars to smash into, a police car. That's the universe saying, fuck you, dumbass. You should you should probably stop doing the stupid things. That's what the universe is telling you. Yeah. Would you, would you look at Grady? Would you look at this? I can't see his head. He's just happily sitting up there uh-huh. while I swivel. Not a care in the world. I am the king of all I survey. He does. The goofiest kitty in the land. He does this all. Jed the Jedi says, your boyfriend can jerk off to BB-8. That's probably true. You know someone's jerked off to BB-8. You know they have, Tara. I really like BB-8. I know you do, but how long we've been doing this? You know. Yeah. I understand the whole being sexy at, and long distance and whatnot. It's it's sure. difficult. I get that. However, time and a place, kid. Yeah. Time and a fucking like, place. This is literally what Snapchat was invented for. Yeah. So that yeah. people could sext and not have a permanent record. Literally the reason that app was invented. Fine. Snapchat your tits to your boyfriend if that's what makes you guys happy. Not while you're driving. Why? What, what the fuck? What, what makes that sexier? You know what's... Hey, hey, honey. Danger. Well, yeah, well, you, now you, you come face first to the danger. You crashed into the fucking police car. Still, yeah. you still feeling hot and bothered? Because I kind of doubt it. Unrelated, I have an itch right here. <laughs> But if I scratch it, I'm going to peel off like 16 layers of makeup and it's driving me crazy. (laughs) Carry on. Oh, let's move on to Tucson, Arizona. Fuck sakes. Here we go again. Although we have yet another one of our here. They again, only this is the first time. (sighs) We've had this for dealing with wasps for dealing with pests, for dealing with Uh, squirrels, for dealing with icicles. This one, I have, all of those made a little kind of sense. This one is just sheer fucking laziness. There's, there's no, there's no excuse for this. Man burning weeds with torch starts a house fire. And when I say weeds, I don't mean weed. I don't mean weed. I mean dandelions and shit. Authorities say a man using a blowtorch to burn weeds started a fire that spread up the wall into the attic of his home. Uh, Fire Captain Barrett Baker says the man discovered the fire when he smelled smoke about an hour after he used the torch earlier Wednesday evening. Wow. Baker okay. Says, Baker says flames in the attic were visible through a vent on the side of the home. And that one crew of firefighters pierced the home's tile roof to put water on the fire. Uh, meanwhile, another crew on the ground sprayed water at the fire through the vent. No damage estimate is available, but the three people who in the home were displaced and went to stay with relatives. Don't got to worry about the weeds anymore. You could have a, if it was that bad, rented a weed whacker, Mm -hmm. or B, set everything on fire. Or, you know, gotten some weed killer. Weed killer, yes. You could have gotten weed killer. You know what weed killer doesn't do? Burn your house down. Dandelions are edible. You could have made a lovely salad. Just, just, why? Of all the fucking, you see weeds on your property and your solution is, I got a propane torch, that'll take care of it. And Arizona is not a wet place. It is not. It is one of those places where if a fire starts, they they, they evacuate entire subdivisions. Yeah. That's one of those things. If fire happens, everybody goes away because that shit's not to be played with. 
I just, it, you fucking lazy shit. And how are you going to, I guess the, I guess the dandelions weren't in the lawn because there's no way to not also set your lawn on fire. So I guess he was killing dandelions in the sidewalk or something. (sighs) Why would you do that? How does one eat dandelion with your mouth? Yeah, they're edible. They're not poisonous. They're vegetable-like. Not We're not talking about the flower part. The flower part's edible, too. It's yeah, just... but well, we're not talking about the flower part and, like, you know, the puff ball. We're talking about, like, the leaves and the stem and everything. Yeah. You don't eat the puff ball. I don't know why you would put that in your mouth. No, but you can eat the bloom, the yellow. Right. But it's just, why... Of all, you lazy, stupid shit. And you know, if this guy's married, he is never hearing the end of this. No. Because they said three people in that house were displaced. And if one of those was his wife, that's the next 30, 40 years of your marriage. Because I can right promise there. you, if Dan set our house on fire trying to kill weeds with a blowtorch, he would never hear the end of that. Yep, that ever, 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 ever. That is the next four decades of your marriage right there. Yeah. You'd be like, hey, honey, can you go to the grocery store? We're out of milk. And oh, yeah, try not to set it on fire. Try not to burn anything down on your way to the grocery store. (sighs) Oh, we have another Halloween ish uh, story. Oh, my God. Oh, bye, Grady. Grady, what are you doing? I'm bored. Okay, well, you go do something else. Um, Were you ever with, did you ever have a moment with your parents was like, Mom, you're embarrassing me. Uh, I mean, nothing springs to mind, but probably. Like I said, I did get sent out to trick or treat dressed as Geraldine Ferraro. Yeah, that kind that that counts. That counts. We've all had a moment with our parents when they're like, they're they're not doing anything wrong. Bless their heart. They love you. They're being kind. Except to us, we're going, oh, God, you're embarrassing me. Stop. My, my friends will think I'm not cool. Well, for once, there are a set of kids who are perfectly justified in that, Mom, you're embarrassing me because holy shit. Half-naked mother of three, 37, is arrested for chasing cars in Tennessee while wearing clown makeup. Huh. A scantily... I love that's your response. Huh. Really? That's interesting. That, That sure is a thing. A scantily clad mother of three was arrested in Tennessee Thursday after authorities say she was spotted chasing cars while wearing clown makeup. Candace Creedle was taken into custody with charges of disorderly conduct, public intoxication, and making non-emergency 911 calls. There's a tale here. According to the arrest warrant, um, Montgomery County Sheriff's Office received multiple calls from witnesses about a partially or completely naked woman in circus makeup and a stocking cap on her head who was seen running after cars and jumping in and out of traffic. Sheriff's deputies was driving the scene of the incident. The county emergency dispatcher received four calls from her, which dis- dispatchers were berated, threatened, and cursed. When the responding deputy went to the woman's home on Louise Road, he probably found her wearing a sports bra, pajama pants, a stocking cap, and clown makeup on her face and body. The married mother of three answered the door, holding and drinking a beer and smelling of alcohol. I got nothing. Wow. Wowie wow. Like, like the creepy clown thing has really reached its nadir, huh? I, is this Harley Quinn, the mother of years? Is this kind of, how? this can't have been just sort of an out of the blue thing for that family. They had to know, where's mom? She's there had to be some warning signs. She's in a clown makeup fucking with traffic again. Okay. Damn I guess it. 
I guess we're ordering pizza tonight then. <laughs> like there had to be some lead up, you'd think, some warning signs here. How how did we get from I'm hanging out at home to I am half naked fucking with cars in clown in there's clown makeup. There was play. That's the makeup, like having just spent an hour and a half putting makeup on my face, like that takes time and consideration. Like this is beyond just naked crazy. This is some serious premeditation. Right. She had to sit down and and get put the clown makeup on and get all set. And this was a plan. I don't understand what the end result would be. Is this a hobby? Oh, someone raises a good point. Maybe she was a juggalo. That still doesn't... No, that, that pretty much explains it. Really? She's a juggalo? I'm no longer surprised. Is that what they do? They just fuck with traffic, dress up like clowns? I mean... Half naked? They wear, like, the clown makeup and get drunk. <sighs> Fucking magnets. How do they work? Like, you know. Oh, when the deputy asked her why she repeatedly called 911 and yelled at, this, at the dispatchers, the 37-year-old, who was described as being intoxicated, said they, quote, need to do their jobs. They were! By arresting you. Yes! You, you were just, you... You're never gonna, if you're a kid, you're never gonna live that shit down. You are always going to be the kid with the naked clown mom. Yeah. That's a, that will follow you. Like other kids are going to go as your mom for Halloween. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, we have, oh, we have some wonderful, incompetent uh, crooks. This is Arizona. You know. A lot of Arizona today. A lot of it today, yeah. There are a lot of techniques to evading police via a car chase. Lots of them. There are trying to swerve and go the other direction, drive the wrong way. There is the taking the off ramp, trying to get back on the freeway. Lots of ideas for doing this. You know, slow down, speed up, try to get lost in the suburbs. This is the weird how many of those you can name off the top of your head. Watched a lot of cops. Watched a lot of cops. This, however, is the first time I have ever seen this particular technique. Man stops at in and out drive through during police chase. Police chases do make you hungry. Man is in custody after leading police on a bizarre chase into the East Valley on Wednesday night. Phoenix police began following the suspect in Phoenix. The pursuit considered uh, continued into the East Valley, Valley, but took a bizarre turn when the suspect stopped at an In-N-Out burger. Suspect appeared to order food, but then drove away and got out of his pickup truck. He ran to a backyard, tried to get to a house. When he couldn't get inside the home, the suspect surrendered to police. According to jail records, 35-year-old Joshua Adkins was booked on suspicion of unlawful flight from law enforcement, aggravated assault, domestic violence, and an unlawful imprisonment. So he's not, a charming not fellow. not for his burger. Yes. <laughs> Why on earth would you... In the, you're trying to evade the police... Why in the world would you go out of all... Okay, well, I know why he went to In-N-Out, because it's fastest. We used to have In-N-Out burgers uh, where I lived. They went away. Uh, we didn't call them In-N-Out. We called them Raw and Ready. Oh, Because they, they were... They, 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 it was some shitty-ass burgers, but the time you ordered the burger, the time you pulled up the window, you got your burger. However, you was didn't get... Mooing? No, it just wasn't very good. It was a <laughs> shitty hamburger. It was a shitty, shitty ham It was just, they were just quick. You you know there's going to be people that yell at you, because as I understand it, In-N-Out Burger is like the main religion in California. Well. So you just picked a big old fight. 
they, they can eat. I've it. never had it. I have no dog in this fight. I'm a five guys girl, but they're entitled to partake of their shitty, shitty hamburgers to their, their, their <laughs> to, to the, they're hurting no one but themselves, really. They're welcome to them. Um, but they, of all the, you're about to get arrested. And well, you yeah, just, you think they're going to have In-N-Out Burger in jail? I think if I was about to get arrested, I'd go get good food. You don't have time for good food. <laughs> well, no, because once you eat In-N-Out and you go to jail, you're definitely doing some uncomfortable pooping. I can tell you that from experience. It's not like you shot up a church and they're going to take you to Burger King drive through on your way to jail. Yeah, but you're going to be doing some uncomfortable... You're going to have to after In-N-Out. You're going to be doing some uncomfortable pooping. And one place that I have never had to poop, never want to poop, is on a prison toilet. That is one of those those experiences in life that it's like the antsy bucket list. Well, yeah, as I understand it, there's not a lot of privacy. Right. One of the things I never want to do in my life before I die is poop on a prison toilet. It's like, it's, it's my antsy bucket list. You have that list of shit you want to do. You know, you have like, uh, never want a spider in your mouth. Uh, never, never want to drink a gallon of spoiled milk. You know, all these things you never want to do before you die. Never poop on a prison toilet. I never want to do that. So if you're going to in and out, you're pretty much guaranteed you're going to have very unpleasant pooping experience. And now you're compounding this with pooping on a stainless steel toilet with a bunch of strangers watching you. I mean, except that he didn't pick up the food. No, did he say? He, let's see. Did no, he, he ordered food and then left. Okay. Was he, was he trying to like, I wonder if he was trying to like blend in. Maybe. It was all of these. <laughs> yeah. They'll never suspect that I'm actually pulled in. They have no way of tracking me. What is that strange rotating thing above me? It's, it's like a whirly bird of some sort made of metal. Was he trying to be cunning here? Because this, this was not very cunning. No. They'll think I'm driving away. They'll never suspect. They'll never know. We got this one last one and this falls into... Remember that, that, that guy... Or one of the many guys we've had. Remember the, the idiot who tried to jump the building to impress a girl and got stuck between two buildings? Yeah. And we told we not just then, but before, we've talked about all the stupid things guys do to impress women. And it doesn't impress us at all. No, we it's not. Idiots. This one, I think this, whatever comes next, it's going to have to be really impressive to top what this guy did. This comes to us from China. Holy shit, you moron. Giant panda wrestles with intruder trying to impress women in Chinese zoo. Oh. A young man reportedly trying to impress two women was wrestled to the ground by a giant panda at, a, big. at a Chinese zoo after he entered the enclosure to wake the animal up. I mean, luckily they're herbivores and they're not usually mean, but they're big and they're strong. After climbing the 1.3 meter high perimeter fence, the intruder jumped over the 10 foot deep ditch and slowly approached the giant panda, Mei Ling, who appeared to be sleeping at the time. As the young man, whose surname is Chen, reached out to touch the animal's head, the 19 stone bear rushed forward and grabbed his legs. Having hauled him to the ground, the pair grappled for some moments before the man was able to free himself and run to safety. Witnesses say his, tor his trousers were badly torn by the panda. The man because they do be have claws. Yeah, man appeared to be otherwise unscathed. Local media reported he was showing off for his companions. The panda the is fine. Is this bear, the panda, saw him coming, clearly. And was just like, like the panda was probably trying to impress somebody too. And was like, dude, watch this. I'm going to fuck this guy's world up. Pandas are bears. Yeah. 
They are. are they, they are generally not, as I understand it, like mean, and they no. only eat bamboo, so they're not going to eat you. But they're not going to take any shit either. They are giant, furry, muscle claw experiences. They're actually closer related to the raccoon than a bear, I think, though. But they're they, they will. But they're large and have mass. I'm you tall. don't. They they don't want to hug. They look cute and adorable and cuddly. And yeah, don't hug them. They don't no. want you to hug them. No. They want you to leave them alone. Yes. You you have to just leave leave the panda. Alone. They're not cuddly they're wild animals although all i keep thinking now is a video got went on facebook this week i don't know if you saw it of a zookeeper trying to clean the baby panda enclosure and there's like five baby pandas that immediately rush her as she comes in and she's trying to sweep up leaves and they keep knocking over the basket to get in it and like run like it's hilarious and adorable yes well they're babies Yes. All kind of baby animals are, are adorable and wonderful. They're, they're all, you know, but... Oh, Catherine. Sexual harassment panda. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when they get bigger, they are not... They are not... cut. They, they, they view you as prey, threat, or intruder. They have territories. You don't fuck with them. You have to establish a rapport. You can't just go up and go, what up? They don't like that. They don't like that at all. Okay, I was thinking of red pandas, apparently. Oh, no. Well, this is Chad bear. Chad is very upset that I messed up the pandas. It's a bear. It's a, it's, a, it's a fucking bear. Bears are bears. They're like armored dogs. I'm right, though. That is the perfect description for a bear. A bear is an armored dog. I would argue it's way worse than that. It's more like a furry tank with claws. Well, yeah, but they're like an upgrade version. They're like if your dog turned into the Hulk, it had turned into a bear. Didn't they do that in the, in the Eric Bana Hulk version? I don't recall that they, movie as it does not exist. They had Hulk dogs. That movie one of, them just, was a, one of them was a poodle. I don't know what you're talking about. That doesn't exist in this reality. You must be thinking of something else. There is no such movie. Mm. There never was. Did but not there is happen. Just leave, leave the pandas alone. And, and the women, they're not impressed by this. They're not impressed. Because instead of being like all the badass, like, I'm fucking with a bear, you got your ass handed to you by a bear, and it fucked up your pants, so you look ridiculous, and you're lucky you're not dead. And she's still not going to touch your penis, because she thinks you're an idiot. Yeah. Stupid is never sexy. Nobody ever looks at a complete idiot and go, oh yeah, I want to bounce up and down on that. No. No. Well. Idiots have their uses. I mean, if all you want to do is bounce up and down on it and then not have to worry about it ever again. Idiots have their place, man. But that's not this not, kind of idiot. That's just not sexy, though. Oh, so, yeah, the first thing we learned that she's not going to be impressed by you. Whatever stupid thing you think you're going to do that's going to impress a woman you're wrong it's almost certainly not going to impress a woman yeah, you're wrong it's just leave the bear alone we've learned that in the middle of the high speed chase is not the time to get a burger we've learned that some kids have good reason to be embarrassed for their parents yeah yeah we've learned fire is not for groundskeeping mm-mm -mm. The list of problems to which fire is a solution is, in fact, finite. Shut up. It really is. It is. You married him. Don't look at me. I know. I know. We've learned that for selfies, there is a time and a place, and that place is not in traffic. Particularly naked selfies. Time and a place. And finally, we've learned there's a difference between scaring someone 
and freaking them the fuck out to the point they hate you. Because you're not really convincing me of the, the validity of your religious convictions no. with your crazy shit. That's, that does not, that's not, leave the crazy shit to the Scientologists, okay? That's their bag. God, can you even imagine a Scientologist haunted house? It would just be like a, a great, a gigantic psychiatrist couch. <laughs>